Um, so start with your name, please, and where you are now, exactly. Uh, I'm Dan Bocian. This is a Polish name and the Italian, then you pronounce it in the right way, Bocia. Oh. Uh, I'm an I mean, you know, I'm German with some Polish roots, but I live uh, since 2000 in Italy. Uh-huh. Since 2000. Okay. Mm -hmm. I came here, of course, for an Italian woman. Uh, my wife was Italian. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the love, not always the love that makes us immigrants, but in my case, for lucky, it was only love. <laughs> or right. war or, or hunger. Okay, and and where uh, where where are you to based then? Uh, what's uh, that? Genova, Genova, ah, uh, in Liguria, Genova. by the by the sea. It's a very yeah. nice town by the yeah. sea. Yeah. Oh. Ah. Beautiful for a German. It's beautiful to live here if you have work and you own money. If not, <laughs> it's a problem. <laughs> mm, I imagine. Yeah, as it is all in uh, uh, as it is in case of uh, port cities. No, with port. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Mm, but beautiful, but beautiful. I was yeah. once uh, years ago, but oh. uh, beautifully, um, yeah, uh, situated. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hmm. Okay. And uh, now you are in your apartment. In your. Um, yes, I'm at home. I'm at home. You are at home, basically. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the small painting behind you. Ah, uh, this you? is. Uh, I, I, I colored my flat some weeks ago. Now it's full of colors. That the walls are jello. The port, the port. The, do you speak German also, Camilla? I, I can understand German, but I don't. The, port, speak. The, the doors, the doors, the doors are blue, cobalt blue, mm -hmm. and I put a little little painting of the Ligurian coast at the wall. Uh -huh. mm, okay, nice. Uh, so you uh, since you uh, okay so 20 years now in italy in genova well from 2000 yeah yeah oh yes you are right 20 years oh my god 20 years mm -hmm. yes it's true 20 years uh, so uh, yeah so i have an order of questions but immediately my question is <laughs> which is out of the out of order and uh, uh, how is it for you to, you know, to uh, to uh, move into from German city from Germany to Italy, basically? It was, it was just not easy. It was a, also if I did not flee from war or hunger, I come here for for love for my wife. But it was an immigration. Uh, I I did not speak Italian. I had to learn it. I lost my culture. I lost my friends. Uh, losing my language was very difficult for me. I could not explain. I, I had a regression on, on the level of a child. You know? mm -hmm. I could not even order a, a, a meal out in a restaurant nearly. This was very difficult. And to, to, to recreate my work situation was very difficult. Mm -hmm. I, had to, I had to learn the language and it needed years to, to stabilize a, a good working situation. Because uh -huh. Italy is a beautiful country, but it's not easy for the economic situation. Uh -huh. Also, the psychologists, the psychotherapists have many difficulties here. Uh -huh. all, is, all is paid. Right? The people have to pay private. It's a free market. The colleagues have to offer themselves like, like a, a goods, bar, uh -huh. merch. Huh? Uh -huh. It's not easy. So, but no, but for, it needed three, four, five years, but no. For many years, I'm completely mm -hmm. okay. in a good situation. But I imagine it is also this difference between German uh, economic uh, situation, economy, and yes. Italian one, well, no? Of course, of course. Mm -hmm. of course. Mm -hmm. Wow. But yeah. now I'm as many years that I'm okay. So yeah. I, if you have work here and I have, okay, I'm 66 years old, I'm a pe uh, pe pensionato, uh -huh. each, I'm a Pensioner, or pensioner? Yes, I work. I work only when I want with who I want. I, I teach in some institutes. I do some conferences, and I do. It's now years that I do only what I want, where I want, with whom I want. And this is beautiful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I don't work much. I like it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, which wasn't the case before. You yes, in Germany I had my normal my normal working life and, and also when I was together with my wife and we had a, we had a child, uh, I had to work of course much more. But now I live here alone with my daughter 
they will start to study psychology this year. Mm. And so I, I permit myself to work less. Uh -huh. it's, a, it's a pure joy. And, uh -huh. and I'm gestaltist, I will never stop to work because it's not work. It's a, for me, it's a passion, it's a pleasure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, speaking about your passions, uh, what are they? What are your passions? Uh... Oh, my passion uh, also to do Kung Fu. <laughs> I'm old, but I do still Kung Fu. Uh, you, you, you showed me that you, you read my book about birds in Berlin, and I have to tell you, one of my passion wow, for for 30 years is the the history of the therapy and the biography of the of the founders. This is really a passion. Mm. This is, this, I'm, I'm still working on it. I'm still discovering new new things, new information, and this, wow. it's a passion. Mm -hmm. it's, I love it. Mm, I Nobody asked me to do it, and I, I did it, and I, I continue to do it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay, so you, you are preparing some new book then, or new... Yes, the, 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 the book Pearls in Berlin start with his birth in 1893, and finish with, the, with his escape from Nazi Germany in '33. And but after this happened many things in, in Amsterdam and South Africa. First years in New York, and I discovered the wow, for me very fascinating things. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> of course, because this book. I mean, I am also a sociologist, uh, oh, and a big therapist. So it, it was so fascinating to read it. I don't remember now very well because I read it really some years back, but um, yes. you know, it is, I can uh, really understand this passion. Uh, yes. mm, so lucky you, so you, you have an access to the different people and uh, archives, maybe materials, no? Uh, uh, yes, yes, I, I, I continue, with, I'm in contact with many psychoanalysts because they are always interested in researching history. And, uh, and like you know, I, I explained it, uh, Gestalt therapy is the development of Gestalt therapy is part of the history of the immigration story of European psychoanalysis. It, this is a fact. And so what they found out is very interesting for me. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I found for example, sorry, if, if, if I go too much in my passion, you stop me, you, you change my the direction of our, our talk. Um, uh, okay, I published uh, uh, in this new book of course, I published a long article with some new material. For example, I found, uh, I found remarks on Pearls in the letters of uh, Anna Freud, uh, Ernst Jones, Max Eitingon, that, are, that was the, the director of the International Psychometric Association. They discussed about him, where they can put him in immigration, and it's a, uh, they spoke always bad about him, of course, he was a troublemaker, and all this is very, very uh, in, in, uh, fascinating for me, and, imp and it's important for us. We mm -hmm. have to know where we come from. Yeah, of course, with this larger context, because what yes. I appreciate in this book, there was, you know, this large and larger context. And uh, uh, yeah, it was not in the uh, solitary planet, on the solitary planet, uh, all that happened with uh, Gestalt uh, coming alive. <laughs> yes, uh, for, for me, it's, uh, it's completely not Gestaltic, not this figure fixed to think Gestalt therapy was, was ideated in the, the coast of Israel from a 70 years old man, or even it was created from Laura Pearls for Gutten and Fritz Pearls in 1551. This is uh, what the therapy is, is, is it's, an, it's a long tradition. We have a long, long tradition and uh, it's important really, like, like every client, I think no, no, not one Gestalt therapist it's only fixed in the here and now situation. Of course, we work with the biography of the people, mm -hmm. figure and context. You can understand nobody and nothing without the context, without the history. And this is our story. And the, the, the history of the psychoanalytic movement is our, is our history, mm -hmm. it's our, it's our, our, our roots. Mm -hmm. And, and there, there, was, there was all. What we think that is, that is a typical Gestalt intervention, they did it in the, in the 30s. They did it in, in Berlin, they did it. It was lost in 33 when they emigrated and Pearls 
perhaps most lesser revolutionary, he was a conservator. Mm -hmm. Strangely, he conserved something very avant garde, mm -hmm. brought it with him in the emigration to America, and he developed it together mm -hmm. with Laura and Gordon. But he was a conservator. He mm -hmm. conserved, conserved something that was very avant garde in the pre Nazi time, and that sacralized loss in America. Huh? Yeah. This is. Mm. So, wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I, yeah, wow. Uh, really, I can totally share your passion. And uh, so it means that you are going to, you know, to publish this, uh, this book in the years. That's no, no, no. The, what I found out from the time after 33, yeah. I, I put in this long, long, I, I permitted myself to okay. to. to, to a rather long article because okay. it was a chance. Yes. It was a chance right. in English. Uh -huh. uh, so you will find many things there. Yeah, so yeah, so I will t take a look at this chapter. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I guess uh, it's stupid. Sometimes I buy books and I bought it and start reading, but didn't actually get to uh, the end. And, to, but and, and when you say you are a soci sociologist and uh, um, let me tell this, uh, Style therapy has the roots in, in the Berlin character analysis. Mm -hmm. that, that, that in, in the end of the 20s and 33 came out the Bogov Reich. Mm -hmm. And what this group of left-wing psychoanalysts, mm -hmm. Ra Wilhelm Reich, Fennichel, Bernfeld, Harry mm -hmm. Fromm, uh, and Perls was, in, was socialized, trained in this circle. Mm -hmm. What they did was to try to analyze the whole field. Yes. To keep Biology, the body, psychology, the mind, sociology, the society together. There was psychologists, biologists, sociologists, and that was lost after the immigration. But we have it. We have it. We did it always. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. This is the beauty of the Stark also. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I can understand. I am, uh, I really, you know, I like Eric Fromm and I like this, uh, you know, this is uh, from sociological, uh, from sociological perspective, it is, he is one of the uh, member of the Frankfurt School uh, of the critic, of this critical uh, perspective, left wing, as you said. So, yes. yeah, so. Uh, yeah, I, I like, I re read a lot, and... Uh... And Pauls had, had a strong connection with From. Mm -hmm. For example, I think nobody knows that they met in Frankfurt, in Berlin, of course, they were trained in the, in the same, same ambiente. They re-met when Pauls arrived in New York in 45, 46, and at the White Institute, the, the Institute of Sullivan, From, From Reichmann, and there's a letter, letter, a private letter from Fritz from the time where he worked in strong connection with the White Institute to his wife, Laura, that was still in South Africa. And in this letter, he write to Laura, dear, dear wife, I have the feeling Eric Fromm is very interested in our approach. And I think we and Eric Fromm will create a new group together. This year, it didn't work huh? because I think from I was not so much in, uh, enthusiastic to build a group with Pauls, that was a character. Uh -huh. <laughs> character yeah. But was he, he hoped, yeah. yeah, he felt very near the ideas of from because they came from the same, they have the same roots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow, okay. Uh, so, uh, coming back to the interview, yes, I need to yes. also... Came, came me. <laughs> yeah, but I need to, you know, also restrain re myself, but okay. So uh, you, you've been uh, saying and speaking about your passions <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and if you were to say more about your values uh, as a person, as a human being, mm. uh, what would they be? Okay, what my values as a human being, of course, are not different come from my values as a therapist. Because for me, for me it's banal, Banal, but for me, it's very important to be coherent in the studio, in the, in the, in the praxis. I'm not a different person. I, mean, I, I don't think this is stupid for Gestalt. I like it. I don't do the doctor. Huh? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not much different. And the value is, my values are, how can I tell it? Respect, 
-hmm. And uh, a very important point for me in my Gestalt therapeutic work is also dialogue. Not so much relational work, field theoretical work. This for me is too much abstract. Dialogue. Huh? On Paul, the tradition of Buber. And a little, I'm, I'm an atheist Buddhist. Yeah? <laughs> and so this, the, the, I found the value, I can find this values inside this, this the teaching of this great psychologist, Dr. Buddha. He's a, he's a, he's a great psychologist, an ethic, a value to, to, to be always open for dialogue. And there's, there are differences between the people, but there is not uh, up or down. And the same attitude, of course, I have at home. I have with my friends, I have with my clients. Uh -huh. And this, I think, works very good. Mm -hmm. Because this is something that every person that comes in therapy is longing for, to be seen, to be respected, also if they are difficult, strange. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so let me ask you, again, a bit out of order about this dialogue thing, because when you are observing today's world, so polarized mm. around uh, different as issues, uh, very important yeah. ones. And uh, do you think that Gestalt, um, yeah, theory around uh, dialogue is st still re relevant? Is it still, uh, you know, might be helpful to to cope with this uh, immense polarization and you know differentiation everywhere and. Um, what do you mean by uh -huh. uh, like okay. around ra race, around uh, yeah. ecological uh, pro problems? That um, how to how to how to put it? That um, uh, yeah, that that people want to uh, maybe something like uh, want to speak about their difference. And this is the most important. It is not so important to find a dialogue. I mean, because they want, you know, there is this political identity, poli politics of identity that everyone wants to uh, underline uh, one's difference. Um, so it is uh, sometimes I, I feel that it is so difficult to, uh, that, it is, uh, that it is as if today's times were like times of difference. And differentiation. Uh, I don't. I, I'm not saying I like it. But do you under? Do you? Am I making sense uh, to you? I'm. I'm, I'm not too sure what I. Mm -hmm. What What I think. What I think yes. yeah, for correct. a long time because I, I'm another generation. Yes. Because, yes. Uh, my father was uh, was very was uh, very was relatively old when I was born. Mm -hmm. So my father was born in 1997. Mm -hmm. There was a man that lived in two world wars, and he explained, he told me much. So I, I absolutely, I'm not okay with it. Uh, I don't know if you mean this. So when I heard people that tell that we live in terrible, horrible times, I think the generations after, maybe my father, maybe that could be your grandfather. Mm -hmm. um, we live in relatively good times. Mm -hmm. Something's changing now, it get, it get worse. But, but uh, for example, my generation grew up in, in, a, in, a, in a very quiet times. Of course, I was in my younger days, left wing revolutionary and I, I did bad things also. And this is, part of, this, this is part of my history, but I'm very lucky to, to maybe I live until still 20 years, I'm 66, maybe I had it at 86. Most of my life I, I lived in, in quiet times. I don't I don't know. Maybe in Poland it was different in a in, because before the break of the war, but in the country where I live, lived in Germany, there, there was quiet times. There was money, there was not war, there was not hunger, there was not repression. Yes. What I can tell, now the world gets more difficult. Mm -hmm. But I think it People suffer always. The human being is beautiful and very crude, crude, crude. It's very cool. This was always in a way, and in a moment, in a moment, at least in Europe, the situation is relatively okay. Of course, in Belarusian moment, I would be on the streets. 
but think back some generations ago, world wars, dict dictatorship. Huh? What happened to the to the German Jews? I, I, I studied much writing my book about Jews in Berlin. I studied much the book about uh, the story of the German European Jews. This is relative. Uh, okay. What is true, and I see that younger colleagues that like you or others start to 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 be active in a political level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are these, these start voices. Is it, is it, I think this is beautiful. This is beautiful, and I think. Um, it's important, but I don't think that the start therapy as the start therapy is, is very important in the moment. Uh -huh. I don't think so. I don't think if you need an, an analysis of the situation that includes the psychological situation, look what the psychoanalysts are writing. They have a long, long intellectual tradition. They are much more than us. They have a long intellectual tradition. I love to be inspired by them. And you know, I told you, I don't see the difference. They are, we are the Gestaltists, they are the psychoanalysts. Gestalt is a branch of psychoanalysis, and so they are my brothers and sisters, and they have a much more intellectual tradition also in culture critic, in sociology, you know this. Frankfurt School, you mentioned the Frankfurt School. And there are people that recollect with the tradition of the Frankfurt School now to analyze the, the situation in a moment. This is very interesting. Mm -hmm. I don't think the start theory, the start therapy have much to offer in the moment. This was this was never our tradition or our, our strong part. Mm -hmm. I think we can participate. Mm -hmm. This is but I don't think we can we can participate with, with some interesting analysis of the situation. Mm -hmm. understand? Mm -hmm. And this is also a beautiful part, a good part of our approach. We are very practical people. Okay? Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that we have no theory. You know, in the last years, there are much interesting high level publications. But to our um, contact, dialogue, mm -hmm. meeting, and, and, and that we are good. And so I, I imagine if young startupists participate in some political activity, they can be important as a person because they are able to relate, to connect, to speak to the people, but not the Gestalt therapy as a as an approach. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And you understand me? Uh-huh. Yes. I, I, I think it's less important. Mm -hmm. What we learn, who, who we are entering in a in a, in a political activity as Gestalt is, that can be a could be an important factor. Yes. Uh -huh. Not Gestalt therapy as an approach. Uh, yeah, yeah, I understand. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, there was one word I didn't catch uh, when you used that when uh, a therapist enter uh, this political arena or movements or okay. so on, they can use their pr practical skills. Yes, 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 we are trained to, 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 to be able to contact with, to contact, to relate with people, mm -hmm. to react, to be empathic, to be concrete. For example, you know, the psychoanalysts, there are many traditions that are over intellectualized. They just, uh, you understand, they have problems to communicate. We are not. Yeah. This is what we learned from the first year of formation. And this is a great value. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We as the Gestalt, as a, okay, maybe this is what you are doing with your series. We as Gestalt humans, not the Gestalt therapy, but Gestalt, humans trained in Gestalt therapy could be a, a, a very positive factor. Uh -huh. I think Yes. I like I like <laughs> what you're saying. <laughs> I, I uh, yeah I you know uh, I will take it with me and uh, sit yeah. uh, with it. Uh, because, uh, sorry, because you see what what are the themes from structure in the moment? Discussion of psychopathology, diagnosis field theory, very important, but this is not a reaction on the on the political social situation of the world in the moment. Mm -hmm. This is completely separate. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Um, okay, so <laughs> then coming <laughs> back again to you, yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, ah, ah, Camilla, what I like is you and me, we are not so perfect English speakers, so I think the people will understand us very well. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and me too, I love my English, is not so perfect, so I have to be clear and simple. Very good. <laughs> what about... Uh, 
Yeah, you said va va values. Uh, and uh, who influenced you the most as a human being? Or what situations, what, yeah, what circumstances made you the way you, you are as a person? Oh, I think, I think my austerity training, if you ask me this, I never thought about this. My gestalt training was one of the most important things that I did and that changed me in a way that that gave me the chance to develop. Mm -hmm. I think my gestalt training. But, but, but b before, was it something uh, also important? Because I'm not only... In a, ne in a negative way, of course, my family socialization, my neurosis that was created there. Co-created, or today we it must be co-created in my family, and the style training uh, gave me the chance to to change, uh -huh. feel better, mm -hmm. to feel good. And uh, okay, so how would you how would you say uh, how uh, how did that change you? What was this development about? In my start training. Yes. Okay, I was trained in a time where it was from eight, 1980 to 85. It was the beginning in Europe. And so, so maybe you can start also, how did you come to, to it? You know, uh, yeah. mm -hmm. there was not a, there was, there were no training institutes with a curriculum. Uh -huh. And I love this. I don't like too much today that there are strong curriculums based every year with a list of books that you must be written. Uh, this was mainly self-organized, and uh, by it was a, it was an organization, a network that was called Jenny Gestalt Network International. It was organized by Jerry Cogan, uh -huh. it was the American Gestalt therapists that was formed by Price and Simkin in the old, the old San Francisco Institute. Uh -huh. He did it. He organized this start training with his young German wife. Live with Klaus Kogan in the, the people that he invited from the old, from the West Coast, you know, San Francisco, Los Angeles, they were people that worked from the heart. So also when it was in the early days and the people was from the West Coast, I have no experience with boom boom therapy, with uh, uh, a confrontation of uh, resistances uh, and I have absolutely this person did this didn't exist. And for the first time, I'm a German. I am come from a relatively post post second more rigid culture. I learned to cry. I learned to no, no, no I, I learned it was so important for me for a man, for a young man, that I learned to cry. And I discovered my heart, not as a concept of something here. That exists something warm in my breast. And for the first time, there was men, and especially one man, Michael Smith, his name was my trainer, was the man Michael Smith. He was the first man from, from whom or from I felt seen and loved. Mm. And this was, it was a re reparenting. Huh? It, it, this was very important for me. So I learned that respect. Seeing the other and love the other. This is an enormous therapeutic potential and has an enormous effect. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we had another trainer, Hunter Bomo, who came from the Los Angeles Institute. And it was the early 80s. And what he did is he teached us Heinz Kohut for Gestaltist, 1984. So I absolutely, also when I was trained in the 80s from West Coast therapists, I never met this, this uh, very confrontative, aggressive, aggressive character and the Berlin character analytic style. It's this, it's not old person as well. They did it in Berlin. Right? This, this changed me much. Physical contact, melting, possibility to cry, at the end, to be proud of me, to be proud of me that I, I am who I am. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think it was that. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's a beautiful experience. I think this hasn't changed. 
I hope this hasn't changed. To see many other brothers and sisters in the training group that, that um, see how much pain exists, how, how much beauty exists, that we all are little warmth and beautiful persons, no? that we are that we are full of light and that we are full of darkness and this is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And this is something that is that give us in relation with classical psychoanalytic training, this group training gives us an uh, adva advance mm -hmm. and that, that we that we directly see see different therapists and different people in therapy mm -hmm. while we are in a training group. But this is a great training. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it was this. My life changed of, of, because of uh, this, this training. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was not formal. I think I'm a very, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a study person. I read like a crazy. You know? I read much. But in, in this training, I was, in, I was not interested to, to understand something. I wanted to make experiences. So I think the first book, the start book that I touched, was in the third year, and nobody asked me to do it. It was organismic self regulation. <laughs> <laughs> I start after two years. I, I, I said, Ma, what, 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 have, what are we doing here? I want to read something. Also, this was very nice. Uh -huh. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, hmm. I, I don't know how to put, put it. <laughs> but, yeah. but let me let me keep it for myself. I'm also. Yes. And uh, listeners and viewers will uh, decide on their own uh, and so on. And uh, okay, so so how was it that you, uh, uh, I mean, um, so I don't know if I understood you right, but there was, uh, you studied psychology, yes? Am I right? No, 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 I'm not a psychologist. This is ah. another story. Uh, uh -huh. I studied social pedagogics. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Later I did a PhD. Mm -hmm. It was a psychological theme, but my 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 I never studied psychology. Uh -huh. Social pedagogic PhD in in I was a psychological theme. I'm a psychotherapist. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I, I, in Germany, I was uh, registered as a psychotherapist because in Germany you can be psychotherapist uh, not only as a medical or psychologist. Uh, um, uh, Study, but also with uh, social social pedagogy. Yeah, I think this is a, is very good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, here as well. Uh, Psychotherapy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And okay. uh, so, so I didn't get that uh, clearly. So, how did you find this uh, Gestalt therapy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. When I was very very young, let's say eighteen, I was a troubled young man, like many in this age. So I thought I need help. And I went in the office of a psychiatrist. And after 15 minutes, I came out with a pack of blue pills. And I threw them away and I canceled the work psychiatry. Then I remembered that in this time I was reading my first, first books. It was Willem Reich, mm -hmm. who wrote about society, neurosis, sexual repression. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, that's it, that's about me. I read Eric Fromm. I read this left orientated Berlin uh, psychoanalyst. And I thought, ah, this is psychoanalysis. I read the culture critical works of Freud. So, oh, this is, I must look for a psychoanalyst. I did not know that this form of psychoanalysis, after the immigration, was lost mm -hmm. and was preserved in the start therapy. But I never heard in this moment. So I made an appointment with a, I think, very important psychoanalyst in Germany. And this was the, this was the American ego psychology tradition. He was distant, he was cold, he was arrogant, and it was very, I had a great delusion this, but this was not what I read in the books of Willem Reich or Eric Fromm and I was very very disappointed. Some years later in the university, my first real girlfriend, all these young women in this time was feminist, and they all did, went in therapy. There was this, this wave of humanistic approaches, bioenergetics, to start, and she told me, Carlo Bent, you are too much blocked, your emotions are blocked, 
you are too much rigid. If you want to stay with me, you must work on yourself. <laughs> you must go in therapy group. And I went in the Gestalt therapy group. And this was beautiful. There was a big, blonde, German, Danish or German, Norwegian woman. <laughs> she was born, she worked with a heart. And this was, this was the psychoanalysis that I tried to find, that didn't find before. And this self-experience group mm -hmm. slowly changed in the first training group of this International Gestalt Training Association. Okay. And then it was, it was a, it was a slow, uh, first one year self-experience group. And then we was asked, mm -hmm. oh, you're interested to be trained? Mm -hmm. and it was important for me because as a social pedagogist, I, for many years in this moment, for seven years, I have worked in a, in a, okay, out, uh, I can tell, in a very bad district of a town uh, with many social problems. Mm -hmm. uh, in Berlin and, or in Berlin or? No, 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 in D D Düsseldorf, Germany. Ah, Düsseldorf. I, Düsseldorf. Mm -hmm. and, and in a social, problematic social district. With, uh, with children of alcoholic parents, children that was beaten, children that was uh, abused, children that had cigarettes that they uh, uh, drunken fathers yeah. put them in the flesh. And after seven years, and we work very, very good, I understand that uh, the effect is very little. They, at the end, at the end, they, 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 they didn't change their mind. Mm -hmm. They need money, they need job. All this, all this we, we cannot do. Pedagogics is not sufficient. And then, parallel, I was in the train, in the Gestalt training, and I had, of course, the group therapy, the single therapy, and I felt my change, and I thought, okay, maybe after that I tried to, to, to help to change people in a, in a group, in a social pedagogic situation, maybe it is more effective to work one by one. Mm -hmm. And I decided to, to, to defend the therapists that work with therapy groups and with single patients, because my experience is that my life and my life of all my companions in the group changed, of course, our start that all the start therapy experience. This was my motive to, to that I told I want to be a therapist. And this now I am from 84, to 2020, how many years are this? 84 to 40, uh, 36. Yes, I, from 85 to now I work as a, as a third star therapist and I'm not tired and I will never stop. And one reason is from the beginning, I understand this is not a job, this is a passion. Huh? When I meet people as a therapist, I learn, I learn too, it's not that I, cure them, I can cure nobody. Huh? It's, a, it's, a, it's a meeting, it's a, you know. And um, I, lost, I lost the red line, what else? Uh, <laughs> yeah, wait, uh, ah, was, I'm how, ah, see, how did you I, I, will, I, I, will never, I will never stop it, I will do it until the end of my life. Ah, I, ah, I, I know, from the beginning, from 85, I understand when I want to keep the passion, the love for this work, I cannot do this five days in a week for eight hours. This is wrong. Because I cannot understand people that see five days patients in the, in the private practice. After, in, after three days to four days, oh my God, another time, I know your mother treats you bad. I'm, I'm sure you lost something. It, get, it, 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 it gets routine. So all my life, I think I never work more in three days in a week until now. I don't do therapy more than three, years, three days in a week. In the past, I did another job. Now I work only three days. And it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I'm open and enjoy for every person that enters. And I sure maybe it's only me, but I am skeptical. Mm -hmm. If you do this 10, 20 years, five days, all, all the clients, it gets routine. And this is a pity. Mm -hmm. It's so beautiful to be a therapist. Yeah. Uh, I remember reading uh, uh, Eric Fromm's biography oh. once, and I remember, uh, and it was a relief for me because he was uh, writing there that all his mornings he, uh, it was for himself, for writing, for thinking. 
and in yeah. the afternoons uh, he was seeing patients <laughs> and yeah. it was such a relief at the th times uh, when I started and I just couldn't and I still don't want to and I can afford um, my life because I work uh, at the university because oh, okay. you know yes. this is this is another thing that people simply uh, work a lot uh, at, at least here in Poland also because uh, yeah, otherwise it would be difficult, but, uh, but I can understand very well your point. Yes. Mm. It's not always, for example, in, in Germany, all my time in Germany, uh, the half of the week I worked in a counseling office. Yeah? You, 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 I can use this word, counseling office, where the people can come and, yeah. and uh, yeah. it was from, from town. They don't pay uh, therapy, counseling with parents, children, young people, I did. I did uh, aggressive uh, aggressor uh, victim mediation uh -huh. for, the, for, the, for, yes. the, for the court. And this for the half of the week. And I was together with colleagues. This is very important. This is another thing. In this praxis, we were alone, five days alone. Mm -hmm. And the second half of the week, two and a half days, three days, I was in the practice alone. And this was a, this was a balance, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because it can be a very isolated work, if you want. Yes. It's only private. And I guess I know what I wanted to say be, be, be before that uh, thanks to this I interview with you and I hope people will watch it. Uh, well, well, people are watching uh, generally, uh, I, I guess. But um, yeah, you are somehow uh, um, Remember, uh, recalling us, especially this younger generation, recalling us, uh, um, I don't know, what some, some things which are so natural, I don't know, uh, what Gestalt is, that it is so much about contact, contacting, meeting, uh, yes. and maybe just a bit put, putting aside a bit gestalt theory uh, because we are good really at contacting and i agree and also about this how important it is to really uh, be passionate about the next person who is arriving uh, yes uh, yes, yes. And it is like um, you know the base basic f things and um, and you know, this world is upside down a bit today, even though it's not that uh, maybe difficult to live in. I agree, like it was in, uh, during the wars, but um, yeah, people, uh, we need to listen to such uh, things, uh, you know, much as, yeah. yeah. Camilla, what, I, what, I, what I did not meant is that I, I did not meant that the theory discussion is, is not important. Huh? This is, is, is it, we needed it. We need. We was too much years without. What I wanted to tell you is, I don't think that the Stahl therapy as a theory has much to give out outside of the psychotherapeutic. Yes. Uh, yes. Sorry. Uh, yes. Power. Yes. We must be honest. But yes. we, we as the Stahlists, the, the way we are, the way we are yes. trained. Yeah. So we, sorry. We yeah. I, I understood it right, but I uh, yeah. So, so thank you for. And there's no much difference between meeting friends. Enter for maybe in a political situation or meeting clients. Of yes. course, I, I use as a modalities, but for me it's important as a gestaltist, and I, I, I allow myself to use this this word gestaltist. As a, I'm always the same person. Once huh? again, what? I'm always the same person with uh -huh. all my qualities, my own qualities. Mm -hmm. huh? And this is very uh, uh, and uh, and this is a, I, mean, I have much contact with psychoanalytic world because I love what they. What they write, mm -hmm. um, but of course, I, I, after the start training, I did uh, analytic training, I did uh, writing body work training to. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, especially with the analytic colleagues, uh, the so called, so -called relational psychoanalysis is so near of the start therapy. And sometimes I like the books of them more than the start books. I find myself more in the books of them. But when I meet them, mm. when I meet them, I see. I think I understand they are able to, to tell it and to write it, but they don't have the experience. For it's amazing, they, no? Hmm. They they uh, they don't have it in their in in soul and in their body. Yeah. Huh? yeah. We are different in this. It is a is a treasure. Well, our training is very different. Yes. Yes. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Um, okay. Uh, what is uh, and what has been the most challenging for you during those gestalt? Uh, well, during those years when you first met gestalt therapy, what was the most yeah challenging in sense of maybe difficult? in practice, maybe in theory, I don't know, uh, wh wh whichever you like. Uh, to mention. Difficult, what was difficult, challenging? Yes. I don't know, <laughs> challenging? No, what? No, what? I can tell, I tell you when in, in my, in, in, in these long years that I stayed in the Gestalt movement, first in Germany, now in Italy, I was always part of a, of a journal in Germany of the Gestalt therapy journal here. I was many years in the Cordelli in the Gestalt, the, the editorial board. And in Germany, of course, we had this moment where there was this crash of cultures, the so-called Persians and the so-called PhD 51 Bible people. And there was some arrogant people in the editorial group that told if you haven't read Pulse, Heffern and Goodman, you don't know what is the start therapy. So I started a fight. I fight with them and uh, later I started a fight, fight with, not fight, I start mm -hmm. to, to intervene. Uh, now I intervene sometimes when people tell um, the start is only what Pulse did in Esalen. <laughs> there exist people that, uh, that, that, that tell things that this, this sleeps was a, was, a, was a mouse open. So I remember them that there is much more. Hmm? And for me, there was never this, I don't know, maybe for your, your generation, this contradiction doesn't exist anymore. And in my training and my thinking, there was never this contradiction this, between Pearls and Goodman, between Ezelen and New York in, in 51. For me, it was always a development and everybody, Goodman, Pearls, they underline different aspects of the same thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if you read Pearls and Goodman, you must read the so-called practical, the first part, it is beautiful, it is beautiful. If you read what is written before and after the exercises, you understand this is pure Pearls. Pearls wrote, wrote, wrote this. This is pure Pearls, this is pure uh, an, an analytic approach that this is People must read all the book. Mm -hmm. And in the second part, the third part, this is, is full of parts. Mm -hmm. Goodman, Goodman, uh, Goodman uh, transformed this in his language, he, he attributed the things, but this is, is all coherent. It's all coherent. And parts never uh, um, put down the Paul Cephalan book. Mm -hmm. And another story is what, what uh, most people don't know, maybe they don't remember. Okay, there is this famous theory of the self. Hmm? The, well, how is it called? The, the, the wave of contact, contact yeah. interruption. Sequence of contact. Sequence of, of contact interruptions. And uh, this is very interesting and all the theory is very avant-garde. But you must know that Pearls never worked therapeutically with this. Laura Pearls never worked therapeutically with this. Paul Goodman never worked therapeutically with this, so nobody can tell the theory of the self is the identity and the core of the style therapy. This is completely stupid. This is a beautiful idea, and it's not a case that they call it theory. It's a theory, and there was a, a tradition of Isidore Fromm, with many beautiful people now in Italy, where um, Margarita is funny a lot, very good, John uh, um, Francesetti, we have in America, Dan Bloom, Robin. These are all in the tradition of Isidore Fromm, first, first not founder, first generation of students. He had the idea, oh, why we don't take this part of the book? And on this, we just try to develop a diagnostic and a practice. Fantastic idea, but this is not where you have to swear on to the Gestalt therapies. Nobody of the founders ever worked with this. It's important to know. Mm, okay. So I come to a point that is very important for me. Gestalt is never either or Pearls or Goodman. Gestalt is contextual, is and Pearls and Goodman. Mm -hmm. yeah. Internal and external. For me, for example, the field theoretical orientation in the moment uh, st stuff 
to be mainstream in a way. There's, there's a great value in it. I, I, I appreciate all these persons that I named before. They do, they contribute beautiful things. But my feeling is there's something that is going out of balance. Individual, individualism seems to be a bad word. And for me, this, there's a polarity, a dialectic that goes out of, out of, uh, out of balance. There is the relational and there is the individual. There is the field, there is all is co-created, there is the between, and there is the internal world of me. I have an incredible internal world, but this is not either or. Mm. If I work in a monopersonal way, without a field or contextual, uh, contextual orientation, this is not the start point. If you overdrive field theory and you don't work anymore with the internal role of the per of the person. You go out of bed. And Pearls was the only experienced clinical. Goodman was not a clinical nor Pearls, mm -hmm. had, had years of experience in South Africa, but Pearls was the only really, really clinical. He's worked with the two chairs. It's an incredibly important work. And this is something that my feeling is get lost and that they are is not relational. Everything must must be related to the therapists. Oh no, not everything. This is to take us too much serious. Mm -hmm. My patients, and I know this because I work with me on, on that, my patients have an inner world. I make experience in relations and I internalize them. Process becomes something structural, structural. There are self-states in me. We call them introjects. And it's very still very important and interject of the destructive father that is inside of me to externalize him, not to go in a transfer with the psychoanalyst. Perth, Perth did analytic work. He took this representation of the destructive father and he externalized them on a chair in a room. Mm -hmm. So the therapist can stay on the side of the patients, support them, while the patient is confronting this representation that was inside of him. This is a very important work. Mm -hmm. So there are themes that, uh, that must be worked through and where the therapist is not important. We are not always in the center of the situation. Tell it to me. No, they have not tell it all to me. If their dream is not always about me. Huh? Also, this must be balanced. All is possible. I must be flexible. There's the internal and the external. There's relational and the individual. Huh? This work is very important. The, all, all the field, field duration is very important, very serious, but attention, we cannot lose the individual part. Mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 we have a world in us. This is what makes us sick and that makes us suffer. Mm -hmm. Our internal world, there is an internal world. And mm -hmm. psychoanalysis and pearls knew much about that. We cannot lose that. Mm -hmm. okay, I have to stop myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I very appreciate uh, it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I can see it uh, when I work with uh, cl clients, but I also see it uh, as a um, patient of my psychodynamic uh, now therapist. Mm -hmm. uh, how important it is to get uh, to this re internal world uh, yeah. and uh, just yeah. for a moment leave this field. <laughs> yes. You can, you can you can say there's a field inside. Uh -huh. there's, a contact, there's a contact boundary known between me and the external where we met, where there's the big famous between. There's a contact boundary inside of me. Mm -hmm. Top dog, underdog is not so stupid. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is a relation that that is in contract, but it's inside of me. That, that means inside of me, I'm a field too. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And... Uh, I, I was touched. No, I just I was touched uh, because I really share this feeling that, uh, yeah, that uh, this uh, suffering and uh, feeling of uh, yeah suffering is in me, uh, in a yes. person. Oh, and yes. Sorry. This what is said. this is what I wrote in my article. I have a problem with uh, when I read sentences like there is suffering in the field suffers. The relationship suffers. There is suffering in the between. This is problematic for me. This is, I don't know the word. Um, if 
Hegel, Hegel, äh, Verdinglichung. Äh, mm -hmm. Estrangement. Äh, mm -hmm. Okay, a, a, a human feeling uh, transforms in a thing. A fear, yeah. a fear it doesn't suffer. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no suffering in the between. It's the exactly mm -hmm. huh? Reification. Yes, yes, for me, all these words, the field suffer, the relation suffers, there's suffering in the between. This is a, uh, what is the word? Reification. Yes, this is near of reification. It's, for me, it's completely correct what you tell. Suffering is individual. There is no suffering in the field for me. Of mm. course, this is theoretically correct, mm. but this doesn't help my client. The, field, the, the, this, the pain is my pain. Mm. individual mm -hmm. yeah. and of course I can I can see all from the field perspective or from the individual perspective and this is Gestalt you remember the, the Rubin vase yeah? mm -hmm. you can see either two faces or a vase mm -hmm. this is these are two realities present in the same person this is this is Gestalt so there is the inside the internal world and there is the field and the, this is both two two Mm -hmm. And if you exclude one, you go out of of that out of dialectic. This is what I want to tell. Mm -hmm. must, like, it's important. Both is both is true, mm -hmm. and it's important for me that we are able to work with both. Mm -hmm. And of course, the field theoretical colleagues do an incredible contribution in this moment. This is yeah, I, I like it myself. Of course, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. and I hope we don't forget the other part. Uh, yes, yes, yeah, simply, simply to say this, uh, it yes. is so, and uh, you know, and having in mind dialectics, uh, uh, laws, uh, whatever. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, okay. Um, <laughs> uh, so, what, 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 what do you think? Um, yeah, maybe one more. <laughs> um, it's not distraction, but I am also interested because you don't know. What's the, uh, you, you don't seem to find the most challenging things in Gestalt therapy for yourself, but maybe the most, um, yeah, what is the most memorable experience for you from Gestalt training? Well, the uh, most memorable, memorable experience is what I told you, that the first time I, uh -huh, cr cried. I was in front of grown up men, especially mm -hmm. Michael Smith, and he looked me mm -hmm. and I saw, sorry, I don't want to be, too much marmalade, and I, I saw the love in his eyes for me. The first man that saw me and that loved me, mm -hmm. and this, this was this was in my heart, and this helped me to love myself. Mm -hmm. So I yeah. can start to love other people, and I'm not so hungry mm -hmm. for love, for needy, so needy for my clients that they adore me, that they, uh, they all our narcissistic needs. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I was fit, fit. Right. My, my narcissism, my narcissistic wound and emptiness was was fit, fit, fit in the training. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I understand that this was important. Yeah. It filled me up, and so I can do it now. I'm not so needy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This was. I never forget this face, this eyes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I. I hmm. And. Uh, what about um, Gestalt future, Gestalt therapy future? You, you, you partly mentioned that it is, yeah, what can Gestalt, uh, Gestaltist uh, can bring to this outer world, uh, contact, uh, meeting one another, but, but generally what could you add more in terms of when you, when you hear future of Gestalt therapy? I think uh, the child therapy must be uh, must do attention to survive uh -huh. because uh, I don't know what is the situation in East, East Europe or Poland. Uh, in Germany, where the child movement was incredibly strong, mm -hmm. now the, the stupid, sorry, the stupid psychologist asked a, psych a law for psychotherapy, and no psychotherapy is paid by the, by the insurance, and of course. Who is paid? Only the only the, the approaches that are um, researched, and what approaches are researched? The ones with the professors in the university. That means in Germany you get paid from the from the from the insurance only if you do psychodynamic, 
systemic or CBT. Start or start is completely out. So the start thing goes down and it exists in, a, in the form of counseling and a, in a second second training. And the trend is, of course, I mean, what is the word? Uh, effective research of effectiveness. Efficiency? Efficiency? Yes, yes. You know, this is a great theme. And there are many colleagues that, that we cover that they try to, to do everything to demonstrate that our work is effective but it, because it is. And of course, these are only, only games. Uh, the psychoanalytic uh, research team do research if psychoanalysis is effective, it will be very active. In the start, it's the same. It's, uh, and this is, it's, a, it's a social game that we must participate. I think this is important that we, that we, that we not disappear, that we, not, that, we, that we still exist in the future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But in the same time, it's, uh, we must do attention, don't, don't lose ourselves in, in very really in this psycho psychopath uh, in this psychopathic really this diagnosis I think mm -hmm. that only because we want to recognize the official we lose that what is our humanistic approach. Mm -hmm. And of course people for example there is there are research international research groups in the European Association there's a group they they try very really to, to develop a phenomenological approach of, yeah. of the diagnosis and this is this is good. But I think we must do a little attention also here to, to, to keep the balance, to follow this, this, this question of you have, you have to do research, you have to show us that you're effective, but don't lose our soul. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I hope this is possible. Mm -hmm. This evidence base. Evi e e yes, yes, this is, we must be careful. And I think they are the colleagues, they are competent and they are working this area, they, they, they understand and what I read is very good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I read maybe also in, in Poland there was a problem with recognition of the staff like this. Yes. In yeah. Germany we are out. Yeah, I know. I know. In Poland? Hmm? In Poland? In Poland? Was... Um, no, it, we, we are still fighting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't give up. Yeah, yeah. And the, the president of the Polish uh, association, Gestalt Therapy Association, yes. and the, the, the board are, yeah, really uh, mm. okay. uh, doing their best. But it is uh, yes, yes. very, very difficult also, mm. uh, I guess, mm. uh, field. Uh, mm. I, I'm, I'm not that much familiar with the news and I'm not updated. Yes. Uh, but uh, yeah, but it is not uh, e an easy uh, field, mm -hmm. <laughs> so to speak. So. Okay, so I guess uh, we got, got to the end. Uh, would you would you like to add anything, uh, maybe or the time uh, flow flow went quick. <laughs> right. Yeah, and I it was good and easy. It's yeah. Good. Thank you. I will. I, I, I thank you very much when, when, once again uh, for for the interview. Then. Um, thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm.